So, hey folks, uh, my name is Gustavo Legario, and today I want to talk with you a uh, few lessons that I have learned during my career about crawler implementation. Uh, I had a chance to work for two different companies in the past, uh, where I was responsible to design and implement bots to fetch data from the web. So, yeah, I, I have been working here in also, uh, I have been working here in UBMIT for almost two years. Uh, it has been a great experience for me. I'm currently working as a software engineer for a, com for a company based in, in, on, in US, and it's a, it has been a, a great experience so far. So, let's get started. Uh, this is going to be a practical uh, presentation. So, we are going to implement together um, a bot here. And the idea here is to show to you how you can, you can use some of these concepts in, in the real life. And for this particular presentation, I'm going to be using ScrapPy, which is a Python framework specifically designed to, to create bots. But you can also implement the same concepts in, in another frameworks like Crawler from Node.js or even Crawl4j, which is a library written in Java. So let me uh, share my screen here with you guys. Doo -doo -doo. Uh, there we go. Okay, I want to share this one. Okay, I think you guys can see it, my screen. Okay, uh, so like I mentioned before, uh, I'm using ScrapPy here, but there are a few things that I, I want to highlight before to, to start about to to do some code with you guys. Uh, the first thing here on my machine, I have a container image uh, on, on Docker, which is running MongoDB. Uh, basically, uh, this Docker instance, this is where we're going to save out the data that we're going to fetch from the, from the web. Uh, so that's pretty much it. And there's a few things that I have implemented previously as well. Like we have here a MongoDB client. Uh, this is basically a single toe class. Uh, there is uh, an upset uh, method here. We are going to talk more about this uh, method in in a few minutes. Uh, and I'm also using PyMongo, which is uh, the official library to integrate P uh, Python with MongoDB. And if you're not uh, familiar with ScrapPy, uh, ScrapPy has a, a nice feature, which is uh, the item definition. So while while fetching data from the web, we can uh, we can uh, we can assert that the data fetcher will follow a, a, a schema. So here, for instance, uh, we are going to fetch uh, data from uh, a Brazilian e-commerce. I'm going to talk about the website in, in a few minutes. But the idea here is to fetch uh, data from from a marketplace, and then and then from there we want to to uh, to scrap data like title price, uh, the URL, the product image, and much more. So with this feature here, ScrapPy uh, will, will ensure that the, the, the fetched product, uh, the fetched item, uh, will follow the, the schema and also have a type validation. And finally, I have a, a domain logic here, which, uh, will, which will make sure that we, we will not have any empty any empty field like a uh, title, uh, URL, and price, we'll make sure that there, it's a it's a valid data that we grab it from the web. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, so let's talk about the the crawler itself. Uh, let me open here real quick. Uh, that fit. So let me show to you the 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 website that we are going to to scrap. Uh, it's basically a Brazilian marketplace place for clothes. So uh, there's nothing too much, too much to talk about the site itself here. Uh, but I want to highlight this strategy that we're going, that we're going to adopt here. Uh, you can see here on the top that we have uh, some categories. Uh, like here we have boots and dresses as well. So the idea here is to make the, our crawler to visit uh, the landing page. And then uh, for each uh, each one of these categories, it will visit uh, one of these categories. Let's say, for instance, boots. And once it's loaded uh, the the page itself, it will fetch all the data here available in this page. And once it is done, it will go to the next page and so go on. 
Once it is done, it go back to, to, the, to the landing page, and then we'll go to the next page and to fetch all the data from, from, the, from the website. So like I mentioned, uh, this is going to be a, a recursive, recursive strategy, but we could uh, also use a, we could use parallelization for instance. So we could uh, send a request uh, from all categories at the beginning, and then from there iterate to through each page. Uh, so let's go back to our crawler. Uh, so here it is. It's basically trying to visit the landing page and printing, printing the response. So let me try to run the, the crawler here with you guys. So let's say scrap by crawl a fitch. And there we go. As you can see right here, uh, we got a 200. Uh, so everything uh, is working fine. So let's say, uh, let, but before it starts to, to work on the, the crawler itself, uh, there are a few improvements that we, we can do uh, right, right uh, Right, uh, right here. So Scrapi provides uh, a settings file, which basically is the overall configuration for all our crawlers. And there are a few things that we can improve here. Uh, like for instance, uh, the user agent. Uh, so the user agent, uh, it's a data that is sent in the, each of the HTTP requests, which basically says uh, who is sending the, the request. Uh, so if you are not using any particular configuration, uh, if I recall correctly, Scrapi uses something like this, uh, is like uh, the string that it will send to the web server is Scrapi uh, slash and the Scrapi version that you are using. So in my case, it will be something like 2.5.0. Uh, but uh, since we want to have our crawler to act like an, an actual user, uh, a thing that we could do, we could, we could go back to our browser and let's open the, the network tab, uh, refresh the page. And here uh, we can grab a request uh, and use a real, uh, a real user agent. Like uh, for me, I'm using a Microsoft Edge my, like for, for my browser. And here we have the user agent configuration. So we can go back to the, to the setting and paste it right here. So this way it will be harder to web service to to distinguish our bot from, from a real user. And also another tip here uh, for the user agent, some web servers tend to block your requests if the, if the browser is too old. Like for me, for instance, I'm using uh, Edge version 9.1.0. So if, if your user agent is too old, the web server can block your, your request. So make sure that your user agent is always up to date. And another improvement that we can do here on the settings, uh, it's the uh, it's the cookie configuration. So usually, if you're not in an uh, authenticate session, the servers can send cookies to to uh, inside the response to to try to track your behavior. So if the, if they see that you are interacting through each page, they can easily detect that is a bot that is trying to access their server. So make sure to turn off your cookie configuration unless that you are uh, unless you need to use uh, some kind of cookie uh, authentication. But otherwise, make sure that it's always disabled. And and still talking about uh, block blocking requests from the web server and things like that. Here in Scrapi, we have this nice configuration, which is a concurrent request per domain. Uh, as the name say, as the name says, it should basically indicates how many requests you can have uh, concurrently per domain. So make sure to use a low value here because if it is too high, the the server can understand your bots like a, a DDoS attack and can uh, temporarily temporarily or even permanently block your IP. And definitely, we don't want that. So make sure that we are going to use a low value here. I think for it's okay, but uh, it, it may depend on, on your application, but I think uh, for it's okay value. We don't probably don't need a higher value than that. And there is two, two more things that I still, uh, I still want to talk here in the, in the overall configuration, which is a, a retry logic. So for instance, let's say our bot is navigating here through the website and for whatever reason, we got a 502 response. So we know for sure that 502, it's a problem on the web server. 
and we might want to retry that uh, that request because it can be a cache miss or a problem on the server connection or anything. So to so to re to to resend the request that has failed, we can use uh, the retry logic here that Scrapy also provides us. So we just need to enable it here, and let's say that we want to retry for every request that fails on uh, 500 and 502. And it will basically, every, like the, the name says, it will retry for each one every time that we receive uh, each one of these responses. And here I'm uh, set, setting how many times uh, we want to, to retry here. Uh, I'm using two, which uh, I think we probably don't need, we probably don't want to retry more than that. And finally, for the configuration, there is a uh, the download delay between requests because we know that uh, a uh, human being uh, will never access like uh, 100 pages per minute. So the download delay makes sure that each one of, uh, between each request, uh, we will wait a, a, certain uh, um, a certain amount of time. In this case, I'm using 1.2 seconds, but uh, we can even improve that by using the randomized download delay, which uh, uses a salt uh, randomized value to sum up with the download delay. This way, we'll never uh, use the same value, not, not the same value, but we'll never use a, a consistent value between one request and another. So let's say, for instance, the first time we're going to wait 1.2 seconds, next request, we'll wait 1.5 seconds. And that's going to be make uh, even harder for, uh, for web service to understand our behavior. So for the overall configuration, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I think uh, make sure that the cookies are disabled. Make sure that you have a, a retry logic when it is a problem on the on the web server. Uh, make sure to not uh, overload the uh, the application with too many requests. Otherwise, you can have your IP block it. And make sure to have a, also a, a a valid user agent for for your requests. So let's move back to let me just save the file here. Let's move back to the to our crawler. And let's try to run it again to make sure that the configuration is still working. So let's say scrap by crowd fit. Uh, now you can notice that's taking a little bit more than the previous uh, run. This is uh, this is because the download the delay that we have just set up here. And but the good news that it is still working, so everything's fine. So uh, like I mentioned before, we are going to uh, adopt a, a recursive strategy here. So just for, to, to not spend some time on this, I have uh, created all the XPath queries that we're going to need for this presentation. Uh, I usually tend to use XPath. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's more precise than CSS and it's more digestible as well. Uh, I think sometimes CSF, CSS can have a, a, some, a little bit complicated syntax. So that's why I rather to stick to, to XPath. So let's say for instance, uh, since we're going, we want to access each category and from there grab the, the products, we can do something like uh, category, categories links, response XPath, and then let's copy the, the XPath query here. Uh, this will make sure that we got all the categories from the landing page and then let's say extract. And for each one of these category link, let's try to visit. So let's say yield scrapi.request, and then category link. And once the, the request is done, we want to have a callback function. In this case, we will build something like self.parse uh, category page. And boom, there we go. So let's say now that we have uh, the method here, uh, parse category page, which is a, uh, a public method and it receives a response to. And let's go back to the, to the category page. So uh, if you pay uh, a little bit attention here on the, on the category page, you note that each one of these cards, let's say, have all the information that we need. We have the manufacturer, we have the product title, we have even rating here, 
the price, uh, image, URL, we have everything that we need here. So what you're going to do here, it will basically uh, say to, we are going to, to, to implement a, a strategy here to say to grab each one of these cards, extract its content, and from there advance to, to the next page. So uh, like I mentioned, everything, every information that you need, all we need to do is make sure that we grab, uh, we, we grab each one of these uh, product cards. So here in the parts category page, uh, we could use something like uh, product cards and say response uh, XPath. And then let me grab here the category to fetch the product card. There we go. And then let's say extracts. And if there is no uh, product card, let's say that list is empty. Uh, if not product cards, let's just return. Otherwise, uh, we want to do for each one of these product cards in product cards, let's say yield, uh, sc uh, not scrap by, let's say self dot uh, product card. It's fine. Okay, uh, method name, let's say the product card. Okay. And then for uh, the pagination logic, uh, you can see here that we have, uh, where is it? Here we have the uh, next button, which will uh, redirect us to the next page. But uh, as you can see it here, it actually do not have the, the full link. It only has the, the path that we need to follow. So we, we need to do some uh, logic here to grab the, to have the right link to be re re redirected to. So let's say that uh, next page link, it's something like response.xpath. And then let's grab the, the next page link with this uh, xpath query and then extracts. So if there's no uh, page to iterate, that means that we have uh, fetched all the products from that category. So we just can just say uh, the same thing. So if there's no next page, I just return. Otherwise, or we, can, we can even use a, a ternary operator here, I think. Let's say, for instance, a return. Uh, I think it, no, actually, I'm going to roll back. I think it is uh, more readable. Re, uh, we have a better readability if we keep it this way. So let's say, if not, next page, just return. Otherwise, uh, yield uh, scrap i dot request. Uh, actually, we need to fix the link. I almost forgot it. So let's say uh, target link it is a uh, next page, actually not next page. We have here uh, the base link for the, for the website. So we can just use uh, string templates. Uh, so let's say formats and then self base URL. And then we can use uh, the, the query result. So let's say next page. So there we go. So here we can have target link, and then we can use the same callback that we have uh, that we are using. So let's say self parse category page. There we go. Uh, so right here, um, let me just define the methods for parsing the product card. And like I mentioned before, uh, we have defined the schema for our item. So let me grab it here, uh, the uh, item definition, which in, which in our case is the is a product definition. So let me just paste it here. Let's say return. And let me create a, a hash map with the, with the right attributes. So let me... Go. All right, so let me fix this one too. Okay, boom, there we go. So now uh, I'm using a hash map here because like I, I mentioned before, uh, we are using MongoDB to store all the data and MongoDB uses uh, JavaScript objects. So uh, while you're returning uh, a hash map to the or, or to our MongoDB clients, it will parse the hash map to a native JS object and store it. 
So that's why I'm using a, a hash map here to, to save our products. So let's see if our, I think, yeah, I think I have everything that I need here. So let's make sure that our uh, crawler is still working uh, properly. So let's say scrap by crawl the feed so we can, we can see how it is going. Let's take a look at it. Okay, there we go. So as you can see here, uh, it's visiting all the pages and is returning uh, the the empty the empty the empty product. That's uh, obviously because we have it. We have not implemented yet the the logic to scrap the data, but we know we can see here that uh, it's returning the response. Not return the response. It's returning the the response. Uh, it's returning the object for this method. And it, we can see here on the console that is visit, visiting each one of the categories. So let me uh, clear here the console. And now let's uh, grab the data that we need. Uh, like, uh, let me just go back here real quick to our uh, DB clients, uh, this one right here. Uh, like I mentioned before, we are here using uh, an upset method because I had previously what I have defined in the in the MongoDB collection, uh, we I'm basically using the vendor ID, uh, which is the store name in this case the fetch, and the vendor product ID is the the ID used by the store itself. So I have created a unique index index for these two attributes. So every time we fetch it. Uh, a product from the from the website, it will visit the collection and try to find the product by the the unique in index. And if it doesn't exist, it just creates a brand new product in your database. Otherwise, uh, it will use its ID to just update the pricing rates and reviews. So that's pretty much it for the for the absurd. Uh, Upset method. So let me go back to, to the crawler itself. And uh, I think another uh, nice uh, tip here, uh, this is not the case for us because we are just implementing a single crawler, but, but when working uh, on real uh, crawler projects where you have uh, multiple uh, spiders uh, to fetch data from the web, something that you could do it, it's implement a abstract class, let's say a spider template uh, each one of the, not each one, but the, this template could have abstract methods like uh, dev parse, uh, not, not parse, but let's say scrap title, and then itself and product uh, card, and then let's say pass, and the same for uh, the other attributes like scrap uh, price, uh, self product card. So what you could do with it is uh, define some abstract methods to have each one of your scrap, each one of your attributes here. And then you could extend uh, the templates and implement the real logic for each one of these methods. Uh, this way, uh, I think you can keep things more organized and then have all the, the queries in a single method like this one. I think it, you, it, can, be, it can be very hard to, to maintain your crawler. So that's one nice thing that, that you could also implement in, in your project. So yeah, so let's use uh, these methods here. Let's say uh, self dot scrap title, scrap title, uh, and before send the product card, uh, the product card that we are actually receiving here. Uh, it's a HTML string. It not it is not a response object like this one that we are we are using before. So we need to parse it before to to keep using the the XPath uh, logic here. So I'm going to use the LXML library from Python, which is, if I recall correctly, it's a built-in library. You don't need to install it or anything like that. Uh, you just uh, It's available in, on Python by default. And I'm going to use the HTML module, which will allow me to convert a string to a real HTML document. So let's say a uh, product uh, is pro, uh, HTML from string, and then use the product card that you just received it. And then we can send it uh, here, uh, products. Let me just rename it here, products. There we go. 
and then let's say uh, self dot uh, scrap price. It's in the product again uh, for the oh this is the actually the vendor ID uh, so let's move it to the price right here for the vendor ID. Uh, I'm going to stick with just uh, the feature. I'm going to use a hard coded value here just for simplification. Let me use here self scrap uh, vendor product ID, which will grab the real ID from the from the store. Uh, okay, this looks good. Uh, let's create the method here. Self products S. Okay. Yeah, I think that's it. So uh, let's create, let's implement this methods here. Uh, so let's say a uh, title, uh, we can now like, like now we are using a real uh, HTML document and we can use, uh, again, we can use uh, XPath queries to retrieve uh, data from it. So let's say XPath uh, the query to get the title, which is this one here. And if there is no uh, title at all for any reason, let's just fall back to a, we can now here, here I think it is a better situation to use the ternary operator. So let's say return uh, empty string. No, let's say uh, return title, the first result of the query. Otherwise, uh, if title, otherwise let's just return an empty string. Uh, same goes for the vendor uh, ID, vendor product ID. Which is just need to change the query. There are some uh, improvements that we could do to this code. I'm just uh, just trying to illustrate how we could use it uh, uh, in real life. So let's say uh, vendor product. Uh, in the same goes for the price, but for the price, uh, let's not use uh, an empty string since it, uh, it's a numeric value. Let's say return zero. And let's change the, the price as well. Uh, yeah, I think, let me just check here something real quick. I think we don't need to use uh, any uh, specific logic here. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay, so yeah, I think that's it. So let's try to run our let me just, let's just check what are the required uh, required attributes again. Uh, it's title, vendor ID. I just need more URL and and then we start and then the crawler will start to save uh, things on the on the database. So let's just uh, implement the URL method here and then and then we know we we know for sure if it is working or not. So let's implement it here real quick. Uh, scrap URL. Let's say here self dot scrap URL. There we go. Let's send the product again, and let's grab here the query for the URL. There we go. Yeah, I think that's it. So let's run it. Let's run our our crawler again and see how it goes. It should save uh, it should save data now on our database. So let's see if it will work or not. Of course, it's not working. Uh, let's see what is going here. Uh, ch -ch -ch scrap by price uh why it's not working oh of course because i'm using the wrong variable here that's why you should never use uh copy and paste while programming so let me try again uh still not working why uh, it's saved i oh i forgot to to save the file Okay, now it should do it. Okay, there we go. Uh, you can see here the the domain logic. It's actually complaining here about uh, 
the product definition, it says uh, it's missing uh, vendor product ID field. Uh, so yeah, it's complaining about the vendor product ID and what else? And the URL fields. Uh, that's weird because both of those fields are here. Mm, check here the domain logic here real quick. Required fields, yeah, vendor products ID. And what is the other one? The URL. Um, so let me. Yeah, you can see here the the products definition itself. Uh, you can see here that it's grabbing the data from the web. Here uh, we have a shoe uh, that we have the its uh, ID. And the nice thing here that if we try to access uh, the URL here, uh, we are going to be redirected to the the item that has been scrapped. Uh, so. Yeah, that, so we know that we know for sure that our we know we know for sure that uh, our crawler is working. You can uh, check by the product title. Uh, you can see here it's the same one that's printing on the console. Uh, we could uh, adjust the console to not print for every product to not cause too much noise. But yeah, we we know for sure that it's not it, it is working. But for some products, it's not grabbing the some fields, but I'm not quite sure why. Uh, but that's pretty much it. There's just one more thing that I want to talk about here, which is the map sites. Uh, this is not something that we have here for all the all the websites, uh, but uh, there's uh, some some sites provide uh, like a, a map site, which you can you can have all the categories in a in an XML. Um, in an XML document. So for instance, if you have you are having any problem to grab the link here from each one of these uh, from each which one of these uh, categories, uh, let's say there's another uh, ec Brazilian commerce uh, that, that provides a XML document uh, with all the categories, which is a uh, next shoot. And then you can look for, uh, I think it is uh, a sitemap dot uh, xml uh, yeah this one right here so here you can have all the all the all the links for each one of the categories in uh, xml format so for if for any reason you are having trouble by grabbing the categories here on the on the landing page for the website you can always go to the sitemap unfortunately the fit does not provide a set sitemap like netshoes does but this is a pretty pretty common standard among sites. There are much uh, there are much more sites that use the same uh, many more sites that use the same concept. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, uh, a few uh, things that I would like to share with you. So I don't know if you guys have any questions. Uh, that's the that's the right moment. People are very quiet today. <laughs> it seems so. Uh, I always like when we come up with, you know, very practical examples and very how to and, and walking through. I think that's uh, really positive instead of, you know, just going theoretical, it's much easier to, to apply. Um, yeah, I, I, I also find more appealing for developers because uh, sometimes it's harder to under understand how you can use some of these concepts in, in real life. So that's why when presenting, I rather to stick with uh, practical presentations. I think it's it's somehow more more appealing. That's at least from from my perspective. I don't know anyone else. Hugo, do you have any anything you'd like to ask? Any? Is there any specific application for for this kind of uh, crawlers, like? Is there any anything we could do with those kind of data? Yeah, so uh, for instance, like here, uh, we, we are scrapping data from products and let's say that's Black Friday here in Brazil. So it's really uh, Black Friday. You can uh, keep tracking the, the price for each one. You can create a, a historical data for, for each one of these the, those products. 
and then oh uh, i think this uh, shoe it's uh it's with some discounts so you can check in your own database and see oh i don't think so because it is the same price from a few days ago so yeah you can use something like that to track uh i, I almost sure that uh, most part of the the search engines that uh, that comp compare uh, price along the history use uh, crawlers like that to to keep uh, price up to date. So this is one application that you could use uh, crawlers. Oh, nice! I didn't think about it. Yeah, that's that's really nice. Anyone else? All right, I think that's it. So thank you all for your time and have a good night. Thank you too. Bye. See everyone next week. Bye folks.